Are you tired of getting rushed and defeated by a superior enemy force in Stellaris multiplayer? Are you tired of getting attacked by the AI too soon when you're not ready to defend yourself? Are you tired of being only dead? If the answer to any of those questions is yes, then I have the build for you. Were you killed? Sadly, yes. But I lived. Woo. And if you enjoy this video, please resurrect that like button. This is our anti-meta build. This Welcome to the Twin Head Tiamat, one of two Dragon Heads. So, the most important part of this, really, well, there's two most important parts. The first is the origin, Here Be Dragons. That's a new origin we've had with the Aquatics Species Pack. And what it does is it starts a dragon off, a space dragon roaming around your home system, which means we have an innate defense. That dragon is worth an approximate 40,000 fleet power. Yes, it doesn't say in the tooltip, but if you go in, that's roughly what it's worth. And it is very powerful meaning if you play it right, you are able to defend your home system with lesser forces than your opponent would be attacking with and succeed and win the battle thanks to this dragon. The other part is going to be about planetary denial and that is the reanimator civic. Now, reanimators is a very spicy civic. We get undead defense armies and whenever someone attacks us on one of our planets with biological troops, when those troops die there is a chance they could be respawned as undead armies which is very very helpful to us meaning with a smaller defensive force we could hold off against larger aggressive invading opponents. The other part of this that is very important is getting a lot of unity. Now we won't be at the point we need to be by 2230. Everything else is just about holding off the enemy in as long as possible. That's why we have the reanimators. Here be dragons, keeps our home system defended. Exalted priesthood is going to give us priests with an additional one unity and high priests as a ruler job. We've also gone fanatic spiritualist to really push up that monthly unity. And then we have Authoritarian, simply to take Stratified Economy to boost our stability, as well as allowing us to enslave aliens if and or when we go on the aggressive. Taking a look at our traits, we have Intelligent, that is going to give us extra research, very important. Ingenious, which is going to help balance our economy, we're going to get 15% extra energy credits. And the final positive trait is aquatic. That will give us an additional 10% to food, energy, and mineral output. When we combine that with authoritarian and ingenious, we will end up with plus 30% to our energy output before we take things like stability into account or repeatable tech modifiers. Otherwise, I've gone with solitary because that is offset by the housing reduction cost on ocean worlds and unruly because as ever, that's a free pick. So when you start the game, you will start with a dragon in your home system. This dragon is your friend. You will get some events come up, uh, which will help in the early game, give you some boosts on your home world. And then later on, will give you some military boosts as well. As ever, you will want to reach out and expand to your first two guaranteed habitable worlds as soon as possible. Go and do that. With your homeworld, you will primarily focus it on research, meaning you'll want to unlock your building slots here and get more research labs in there to boost up your research. On your first and second colony worlds, I would recommend the first building you put down is a temple. That means that instead of having the colonist jobs, you can re-employ them as priests. Yes, it will take an upkeep of two consumer goods, but for that, you'll be getting some science research and you'll most importantly be getting unity. Another important thing you will need to do is you'll need to make sure you take the shield technologies whenever they become available. Getting up to level three shields and then once at level three, making sure you get a scientist with the expertise field manipulation is very very important we need to make sure to get planetary shield generators as in the beginning the world outside our capital will be very much less defended than our capital and we must defend in depth 
rather than attempting to fight them in one large engagement at our borders or above one of our colonies. Be aware that around year 10 the dragon will attempt to land on your capital. Make sure to have 75 influence saved up, otherwise you will lose some ships and some pops, or just some pops. The dragon will then land on your world and you will get some great buffs, plus 10 stability, plus 7 unity, and it only costs 15 food upkeep. And now I have access to the shields technology. This is the level 3 deflector technology I was talking about. Make sure to take it. When the dragon takes flight, you will hopefully already have some exotic gases produced and saved up. If you don't, it could be worth burning them for fuel in order to get some exotic gases to trigger the shield edict. As you can spend exotic gases to give yourself a 25% boost to shield hit points. Now I'm going to take Planetary Shield Generator and I'm going to build this, once I have the technology, on my two colonies. That means that they're going to get quite a big reduction to orbital bombardment damage. We are now at 2230 and I have built and deployed a navy. I've got a total of 56 battleships and I've made sure to specialize them to be, in a lot of ways, the opposite of my dragon. Where the dragon relies heavily on armor, we should make sure that our ships are primarily shield focused. That way, any enemy navy coming to attack us must either spec to fight our dragon effectively or choose to fight our ships effectively. At this point in the game, that should make it nigh impossible for an enemy fleet to overwhelm our defenses. We mustn't forget that 12,000 fleet power, whilst not an overwhelming amount, could be enough defensively even without the dragon. With this dragon, our home system becomes nigh impregnable. Now, our home system is relatively safe. We need to think about the colonies. On our colonies, we must have a planetary shield generator and a dread encampment to make sure that all of our armies are undead armies. That is very, very crucial in order to deny the enemy these worlds. No matter what comes through that gate, you will stand your ground. I would recommend one colony be specifically focused towards energy credits and energy output, as we actually do need energy in order to build our undead armies. Whilst the other world should be primarily industrial focused, make it into your forge world, get it to produce a lot of alloys. When it comes to our traditions, I have been a little unfortunate. I didn't quite manage to fill out my third tradition slot by 2230. Possibly I should not have completed Discovery and switched over to Supremacy first to complete that one as it has some great finishing effects. But the exact specifics on traditions here, not necessarily so important. I'd probably recommend Prosperity with standard construction templates to start and then Discovery so we can get a Researcher upkeep reduction followed by Supremacy to get those nice bonuses there. The important thing is that we do want to get our four ascension perks unlocked as soon as possible and have completed an ascension path. For this reason the easiest and quickest ascension path to complete for us will be the psionic, so we could go for mind over matter followed by transcendence. As you can see after we have unlocked four ascension perks and completed an ascension path or unlocked six ascension perks, so completing that ascension path is the faster option, we then can take control of the dragon and we get access to the dragon hatcheries. When we have control of the dragon, it's very important to note that it actually comes equipped with a jump drive, meaning that we can have a jumping dragon as early as possibly 2240 or 2250. That is a very scary prospect when we're finally ready to stop being defensive and go on the attack. There is a final effect as well, once we have the Citadel technology, we can build a Dragon Hatchery, allowing us to recruit up to 10 fledgling dragons. However, those fledgling dragons do require living metal as part of their cost to build, making them actually very difficult to get. Do not rely on getting living metal. In some galaxies, it doesn't even exist. And if our enemies ever do manage to kill our dragon, we will be able to reanimate it. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. But I don't want to spend a lot of money. 
as you can see, this has had very little ill effect on our dragon and we finally get to see its apparent fleet power. Something to note as well, it is possible to take down the dragon with only around 10k worth of fleet power as long as you have fully equipped out something like plasma weaponry or proton launchers. Here we can see Harosgar taking fierce and deadly damage from a plasma fleet. We really want to make our external colonies into fortress worlds, make them as defensible as possible. To find out more about fortress worlds, click the video on screen now.